Welcome to a, another Venom tutorial where I'll show you how I created this Venom transformation effect and break down all the different elements so you can easily create it yourself. Lies! You're a liar, Stevie. You are crying in front of your computer late at night. <laughs> Pathetic human. Your video is going to be sideways. You got to flip it before you start recording. This is stupid. I'm going to get some chicken. I'm hungry. This will be more of an overview video, but it'll be cram packed with geometry nodes, tips and tricks that I learned along the way. I won't lie, this one took a while and it got a little complicated, a lot of render errors, but I made a simplified version of the file using Suzanne and you can download that off my Gumroad link in the description. I mean right here because YouTube lets me do that now. Everything's cleaned up clearly marked and it should be easy to apply this morph effect to any two similar objects. But if you're hungry for more, here's how I did the complicated version. First, I needed a digital version of myself. So I used an app called In3D that allows you to scan yourself in. It'll have to do for my budget. And I also downloaded some clothing from TurboSquid and aligned them to my model. To attach them to my rig, I used a data transfer node, selected my rigged model and then using vertex data vertex groups i applied that modifier i had to apply some smoothing because the vertex groups were not exactly right i downloaded this awesome venom model from sketchfab he wasn't rigged so i rigged him using mixamo as well i then aligned venom to my digi double scaling his limbs and everything to match my digi double scale and then I used the same exact armature for both models. That way when I applied animation, they would line up. I also rigged Venom's face because I knew I would want to have some control over that later. I rigged a lower jawbone as well as an upper jawbone because he's an alien. And then I rigged his lips using bendy bones, which are awesome. And these are just controllers that control the bendy bones. I also rigged his teeth, which might have been overkill. With both my characters aligned, I grabbed some mocap data from Mixamo that I liked. I added a little bit to it by scaling up the root bone over time. That way, once I'm Venom, I become 9 feet tall, because I'm not 9 feet tall. I also animated his head closing over my head like a helmet. Now it's time to dive into geometry nodes. The entire morph happens on a motionless character and then that morph is tracked back onto an animated character. The first element I'll cover is the transition between the Venom Mesh and the Digi Mesh. So let's look at the Venom Mesh geometry node setup. There's a lot of nodes here, but we'll let's go through it from the start. First, this growth setup is important and it's used everywhere. So let's take a look at that. Inside this growth setup, I've input all these little helpers. I wanted the growth to be able to start from multiple positions in space. So those helpers get read into the system. I'm instancing a mesh line on them because then I can use a geometry proximity node because there's an actual point on these helpers. The result of this geometry proximity can be um, filtered through a color ramp to make it more contrasty or whatever. And then what I'm doing is I'm subtracting a value called growth from that. So I can animate that value and make it start at zero and grow over time. If you're not using the viewer with geometry nodes, you should because this will visualize data that you can't see otherwise. So. I'm just plugging my venom mesh into the geometry part of the viewer and my result of this color ramp into the value. I'm outputting a few different proximity setups. One where it is actually a ring that goes outwards and then a broader ring and stuff. And these are used in different locations throughout the setup. So now I'm using this growth setup and I'm adjusting the fall off for this particular scenario. And then I'm reading in my, my digi double mesh, my human mesh. And then I'm using a mix node set to vector to blend between the position of 
my venom mesh and my human mesh and the factor of that is plugged into my distance so stuff out here will be set to the position of my human mesh up here it's just taking that same distance value and grabbing a value less than a certain amount and deleting geometry beyond that this whole mess of nodes down here is literally just to create this cool displacement effect what I'm doing is I'm using shortest edge paths to create a vein like structure over the mesh and I'm just using the position of one of the growth controllers to determine the start point of this shortest path setup and down here I am adjusting the edge cost value to a random value to make the branching more randomized I am converting it to a mesh merging close vertices together and then back to a curve this removes overlapping vertices which you get with the edge past the curve and then I'll smooth out my curves a little bit add some noise set the position back to the venom mesh and that will give them a more natural veiny look and then I'll convert this to a mesh and use a geometry proximity node I'm gonna adjust the output from the distance to crunch it down and then I can get this information I'm going to multiply this value by the normal because I will displace the mesh along the normals and then I've got a noise texture that I'm also multiplying it by to add a little variation and then in the end I'm multiplying it by the growth setup so that this displacement only happens during the transition and I've got a couple other things set up here to limit it from affecting the head as much over here I'm also adding a bit of extra noise to the head the final thing I want to do with my venom setup is I'm going to output my growth parameter adding a noise texture into it into a radius output because I can use that in my material later the human morph setup is a little more simple all I'm really doing is doing the inverse of what I did on Venom to delete geometry and I'm putting a little overlap so you don't have a hole there and then I am just outputting my radius value at the end for the material the closing setup is very similar to the human morph setup all I need to do is use the same method as I did for Venom and blend between my venom mesh position and my clothing position so that way as it grows the clothing conforms to the venom mesh then I'm just deleting geometry using that same growth setup as for the human morph and outputting my radius for the material now for what I call the fluid this goes over the top in the transition area and hides that seam I'm once again using shortest edge path so I'm getting the location of each of these controllers and that is finding the nearest vertex to it and that vertex is used as the end vertex so you get a flow from the central location outwards over the entire mesh so I've got my curves and now I'm setting my curve radius here using the growth setup group that I used so many times before with a little extra I'm also tapering them over the length with a separate second curve radius shortest edge paths generates a lot of overlapping curves so what I'm doing here is just saving the radius in a capture attribute node curve to mesh merge by distance and then mesh to curve and then I'm just setting that curve radius back because it won't save that without this you're gonna have performance issues now I'm smoothing out the curves and I'm resampling them I am adding a little bit of noise to displace the curves and then I am setting the position of my curves to the morphed version of the objects these curves grow over a static mesh and they have to grow over a static mesh they're just growing over my human mesh and what I'm doing here is grabbing the venom morph object and then I'm setting the venom morph for object to the clothing position based on their distance from the clothing set position does not work well if you have meshes with holes in them if you have like geometry being deleted 
it'll cause glitching in your render, especially for animation. In the next step, it's gonna be just a curved mesh. As you can see, there's a lot of disconnected parts. This happens because of the merge by distance node. But outside of geometry nodes, what I'm doing is I'm remeshing the curves with a voxel remesh, and then I'm smoothing them to get that fluid-like look. The last geometry node setup is a smaller tendril setup that I actually have a tutorial for here. And all that I've changed in there is just grabbed my um, radius value, my gr animated growth value, and I'm just using that to set the curve radius of these tendrils so they only appear where the transition is happening as well. Everything sort of works together and um, the tendrils add a little bit of detail. The fluid is the large scale breakup and covers up thing. And then the morphing setups are just to transform one mesh into the other. I've got a material setup that makes it look like a little bit of extra venom fluid is seeping into the clothing and helps with this transition. What I've got here is my shader from, for the pants and then a mix shader with the venom material. And I'm using this mask, which is grouped so I can use it everywhere. And all this is is the radius attribute that I output from geometry nodes run through a color ramp so I can control the fall off amount. As you can see here, my scene is kind of organized at least. and What's important is to create a renderable layer because I've got a lot of helper objects that should not be rendered. There's a duplicate of each morph object here that is the static version. Once I was done doing this static morph, I would duplicate those objects, set them up a little differently so they can be animated. So all I'm doing for the Venom transformation is I'm applying the armature modifier after geometry nodes. In the original Venom one, that armature modifier is just turned off. And the delete geometry setup in geometry nodes for the static ones is also turned off, so my set position nodes don't freak out. So for the fluid and tendrils, that works a little differently because you can't really transfer vertex groups to this crazy dynamic mesh. So there's no static version of these. What happens is I'm using a mesh deform modifier after the geometry nodes modifier. Um, and that mesh deform is targeted to a shell object. The shell object is just my original digi double mesh pushed outwards. And the important thing is that no vertices of your fluid or your tendrils go outside of this shell. Finally, for rendering, I just use a really um, contrasty um, HDRI with a lot of detail in it. I like nighttime or dusk lighting for Venom because he's so dark and shiny. The shader for Venom is really easy. It's just a really dark, shiny material and makes everything sort of look cool. That's the, ol that's the only easy part. This um, system could be applied to footage if you took your digi-double and rotomated it and then you could technically take this whole thing and just composite it onto actual footage. Uh, but that would be another project for another day.